Hello again, guys. So I just made this video on <clears throat> the fullness of the Gentiles being come in and all Israel being saved. And right after I made that video, I felt like I kind of explained things a little bit wrong and I could do better. And it's like, darn it, that happens all the time. And I just, you know, it took like 30 minutes to upload the video or whatever. It's like, oh, no, I'm going to do it again. <clears throat> so I'm kind of sorry that, you know, I've been making a lot of sloppy videos lately, but that's just kind of the way it is for me, I guess. I plan on, you know, refining things, and I'll go through and I'll delete these. Basically, my website's the core of my ministry, and on my website and on the forum, you know, I'm going to construct studies, and I'm going to do expository on there and stuff, like verse by verse, and put it on the website. And once, you know, I feel like, you know, I've really nailed it, then, you know, I'll make like a polished video on it, and I'll try to remove, you know, all the sloppy videos on the subject that I made or whatever and so that's just kind of the way I'm doing things now but anyways let me look at this well I wanted to talk about first of all how I was talking about the King James you know it says the fullness of the Gentiles be come in and I said that I kind of got a better understanding when I saw that another translation talked about the fulfillment of the Gentiles being come in but there's not a problem with the, what the King James says at all. I don't want to get that idea across. You know, fullness, you know, is the perfect word. That's fine. Um, you know, so it's like if prophecy is being fulfilled, you know, fulfilled, um, you know, or if prophecy is fulfilled, it's like the same way of saying that, um, you know, the full revelation of this has come to pass. Okay, so... It is in its fullness, okay? So it's the same thing, you know. It, but, you know, it's just the English language of the King James and, you know, understanding the different meanings of these words and stuff. You know, I'm not against using other Bibles, uh, you know, looking at the verses and comparing to try to get a better understanding. There's nothing wrong with that at all. You know, there's nothing wrong with using, you know, the dictionary or commentaries. It's all the same thing. You know, if you get any kind of an insight or anything that helps, there's nothing wrong with that at all. In fact, I think that in this age, in this day and age, us Christians, we have no excuses really for not, you know, studying these things and, and learning more uh, with all the resources that we have. You know, just having the internet, a cell phone, and and just all the books, too, you can get at thrift stores and stuff so easily. Just everything's out there, and it's just practically, you know, free or, or really cheap, and stuff's just everywhere. So we really have no excuses, you know, to not look into things deeper and get a better understanding from that. I think that God wants us to use, you know, our intellect, our resources, and, and you know, what he's given us. So, uh, you know, but I'm not promoting the modern translations and stuff by saying that, you know, they have their problems. They remove verses, they remove words, they twist words to where, you know, they cause false doctrines and all kinds of problems. So, you know, I do believe that the King James Bible is a perfect, you know, preserved word of God. And, uh, anyways, I guess I don't need to go on that anymore, but I just kind of want to explain that more. Hopefully you can see that, how that word fullness, you know, it means, you know, the same as fulfillment. It's just how we're taking that, how we may take that, how it's commonly taught, you know, it can, you know, and I'm not saying that the King James Bible is misleading or anything like that, okay? It's just that we need to conform to it, we need to learn the language, and, uh, you know, that's what we need to do. So there's nothing wrong with that. But, uh, so it says, blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in, or to, okay, until the fulfillment of them, um, comes in to play of them giving the gospel to Israel, to Israelites. And so I think that what I should have explained better, that I think that I kind of got maybe a little bit wrong, is when it says, and so all Israel shall be saved. Okay, I said, and so means in the manner, not not the time, okay, not after the fullness of the Gentiles become in order. It's in this way, okay, so, and in this manner, all Israel shall be saved. And so, I believe actually now what is being said is that all, and so in this manner, um, the fulfillment of the Gentiles coming in uh, and giving the gospel to the Israelites, this way, all those who, all those Israelites who believe the gospel from the Gentiles will be saved. Okay? 
So and so all and so all Israelites who believe in the gospel shall be saved. That's basically what it's saying, I think. Uh, so and in this manner, okay, in this manner the Gentiles giving the gospel to the Israelites, those Israelites who believe in that gospel will be saved. And that makes a lot more sense to me. Okay, so I said that Israel is kind of the remnant and stuff, but I think that it means just ethnic Israel, um, you know, the Israelites, but it's saying that in this way, all those ethnic Jews who believe in the gospel that the Gentiles will be giving them, they will be saved. And uh, so, you know, this whole chapter and stuff is just talking about how beautifully, you know, the Jews and the Gentiles and God's plan, they're working together and stuff. Um, you know, so it all goes together and, you know, it's just a really beautiful chapter. And, you know, really understanding it in the futurist way to where this somehow teaches the rapture, this somehow teaches like a future restoration of Israel into the land, into the millennial kingdom and all that, it just kind of like throws a wrench into that. And it really just kind of destroys, you know, the whole context of what's being said here. Uh, I, I can see that now. Um, so that's unbelievable. You know, I had so many thoughts and ideas that I wanted to talk about, but I think I want to make this not very long. So <laughs> I just wanted to explain that better the fullness, you know, and, oh, I guess I wanted to say, you know, how so, you know, and so all Israel shall be saved. So it means, and in this way, and so in this manner, all Israel shall be saved. And so it's interesting, we see how so can mean, you know, in this manner, and it completely changes, you know, what you may have thought before when you think that this, this means, you know, and so afterwards, all Israel will be saved. Uh, but it doesn't. It means in this manner. So then you can go through and you can see different verses and times when the word so is used. And you can see if that applies in other verses. And so this un opens you know, your understanding of the scripture. It gives you more things to work with. And you see that things aren't as narrow or limited as you may have thought they were. And uh, it might help you to understand other passages so it's really crucial, you know, to understand the language and stuff like this. And, you know, we all get messed up on it, and we all need to learn it. And so I'm not, like, an authority on that or anything like that. I'm not, you know, perfect. But I'm just, you know, when I learn these things, and I want to share them with you. So that's, you know, that's how my ministry works, I suppose. But, uh, you know, and I just stress these things, that we learn how to interpret this. I don't really see a lot of Bible teachers doing that whatsoever, Okay. They're not teaching it, or they're not even really trying to do it themselves. Okay, but we really do need to understand the language and see that there are different ways to interpret things, and we need to find out the best way to interpret them to where they're all, you know, consistent and, and work together and, you know, give the correct understanding. So... That's that. But it's talking about giving the gospel. It's talking about Jews being saved through the gospel. And uh, how Jews and Gentiles, you know, work with, work off of one, one another in, in God's plan. So, nothing about the millennial kingdom or anything like that. So, God bless.